All right. Let's get this cooking. Bring it. I actually live in Southern, but we actually just got a bunch of snow, so I'm ready for some warmth. So let's get some coconut cooking from the Cayman Islands. We've got Shelly sharing her version of Rundown, which a lot of people were asking me, what the hell is Rundown? <laughs> and um, so please tell me why you picked this and do you know what it means? Hmm. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Cayman Islands, everybody. So I'm hearing that we are, you know, I didn't know too much about what I was stepping into, which I kind of like it that way. And I'm in, I'm hearing that we got the whole world showing up here today. I heard London, Switzerland, Jamaica. What else am I hearing? Canada. Canada. I, you know, let me just Jamaica. for a moment, just for a moment, let me say that coming from Southern Illinois, living there most of my life, I didn't really have much connection with Canadian people, just simply where I, we, we were living. You know, we just don't have that that connection there so much. And here on the island, there's a good bit of you Canadians. And I gotta tell you, I'm liking you Canadians. You people are funny and you're kind. And, and you are a ball to be around. Polite. So I have, I found, a, I found a whole new love with Canadian people. I love you all the rest the same too, but I'm just, you know, I'm getting Well, to when it. they're away from snow, they're really polite. <laughs> they're well mannered, they're very well mannered. Some people will be cooking along and asking questions, and a lot of people will be watching and some asking questions. Okay, so let me get to your question, Gore. All right. So, the, so how did I how did I learn about Rundown? So I was at um, you might remember the restaurant Peppers. Do you remember Peppers? Um, or the fish shop? I've never ate there, but I, I, I remember. <laughs> it. So I was at Peppers one night, and I just saw it on the menu. And it had coconut milk in it. So that's, you know, that's a buy-in right there. So I just ordered it. And I mean, just the flavors are so simple. And, and you, in Rundown, everything is cooked together. So you have this melding of these flavors of things that I love, coconut milk, spice. I've had uh, Rundown, but this right here, fish and pumpkin together sounded to me like horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like... Um, again, this is Cayman style. So, so the Jamaican style of rundown is made a little bit differently. There's not, uh, you won't find as many of the, the bread kind of vegetables. You, um, in, in all, a lot of the Jamaican rundowns that I have, I've seen, it's, it's tomato, it's coconut, it's cilantro, peppers, uh, like green pepper, red pepper, other, and then those kind of sweet peppers, uh, along with hot pepper. Um, I have seen it uh, served with, like breadfruit, things like that. But I haven't really seen it before cooked with the different kinds of, of squashes or the yam and the cassava that we've got today. So that's more the Canadian style that's coming in with this. Yeah, um, came on, they got a lot of, a lot of pumpkin that grows real easy and good, good quality one. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, they call it pumpkin here, but it's really squash, but they do call yeah. it pumpkin here on island. Uh, yep. A lot. Of, another thing that grows here a lot is okra. Okra is really uh, abundant on the island, and I love okra. So I incorporated or okra into one of into this recipe. And okra, I think, is basically one of my favorite vegetables ever. So uh, rundown. It's very simple. Rundown just means cook down, and it was just a Jamaican way of describing a, a pot of food altogether being cooked down. And so, so from, in, so the. Oops. Stand by. All right. Had a bad internet connection there for a second. I'll show you the ingredients I bought. Oh, I should have probably put it in the chat. Um, um, I will leave to either Bamak breakout room or the bar. <laughs> just like, like again, kind of Shelly, we lost you for about we lost you for about 20 seconds probably no, no she froze time. again well the, I let me put it in the chat the ingredient right list let's see well that's not it i'll just have to talk about it here the ingredients 
Well, the one thing I didn't find was scotch bonnet, but a friend of mine grows scotch bonnet and makes this hot sauce. So I got that. And then um, couldn't find fresh mackerel. They've got mackerel in cans, but I did get some good fresh fish with this skin on it chopped up. So, um, and then a little pumpkin, acorn squash. Now, acorn squash are a pain in the butt to cut up. So if you want to do it, hey, or can you kind of, it's going in and me? out. Yeah, going in and out. I actually found some butternut squash frozen. Mm -hmm. so you can not have to deal with chopping it up. Yeah, you got to be careful um, with a butternut squash cutting it that you don't hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always okay. just cut it in half and then baked it like that. But... Uh, and then, of course, the secret coconut milk. Yeah. Um, you almost need a cleaver for a butternut squash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of these things. Right. OK, how about now? How are we doing now? OK, yeah. you're back. You're, you're back. back. OK, bye all right. Bye, 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 five. OK, I'll, so um, so I don't know the last list of ingredients. Yeah. What would you say, Orin? Well, I was given a list of ingredients. Okay, do you want to continue with that? No, we just finished pretty much. I don't have okra. So, but, yeah. but okra is really good for. I've seen it. Well, I probably could find it frozen. Yeah, uh, you can get it frozen. A soup, a soup before. Yeah, yeah, that's actually why I'm bringing it today because um, I couldn't find fresh, so it's actually frozen. For me too. So with butternut squash, um, let's just go, let's just run through all the ingredients that we're doing. Um, because in Jamaican, in Jamaican rundown, you use all those ingredients that I listed before of the coconut milk, the tomatoes, the cilantro, the peppers, the hot peppers, and the typical fish is mackerel. But in the Cayman style of, of rundown, you are going to use more like mahi or snapper or wahoo, uh, a fish like that. So it changes up a little bit in, in what your choices are. But rundown is such a, um, a versatile recipe that you can go anywhere with it as long as you have the staples of pepper, hot pepper, coconut milk, fish, cilantro. You can, you can go anywhere with it, whatever sounds good to you. So I'm going to grab the fish. I'm going to get the fish out of the fridge. So what I got going right now, and I'm going to go back to the butternut squash thing. Um, butternut squash can be a, a bit of a booger to, to deal with. So what I've got going on the stove right now is I've got going a hot pot with just a little bit of water in it, and I'm heating it up to boil. And what I do is I put the butternut squash, and I just got a little one here. And, and so what I do with this butternut squash is I just pop it in the pot of a little oh. bit of oil, a little bit of water. And just let that, let that steam for just a couple of minutes. Everybody always teases me about my little pot. Look at that, you guys. It just fits in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah take the lab label off. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to take the label off. <laughs> like... Who does your set design or huh? remember those labels? <laughs> just like, well, I try not to prep anything ahead of time, so it's show it realistic show instead of. So this is hey, look, so you'll be able to. Here's the turkey. This, uh, Shelly, so this is this is so you'll be able to cut that squash up without killing yourself. Yeah, this is so it makes it easy to peel. Now, did you? Okay. You're just putting just, a little layer of water to like steam it, right? Right, just a little layer of water, not even an inch. And you're going to steam it for just a couple minutes and then it, then it's really easy to peel off so you just get it to where you can handle it and it, it was as far as cooling it and then you peel it really easy and then it's cho it chops easier at that point too so let's go this way and look at the rest of the ingredients that we have here for this this dish today so i'm going to do your mackerel is great if you've got mackerel but i'm going to do mahi mahi and wahoo and snapper work really great for this recipe and these are all these are all fish that you can get local here on the island. So the um, only fish I could get with like, look like a fish with the skin and all was catfish. Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get that from the pond? 
<laughs> you know, in a, a lot of um, Jamaican dishes or uh, Caribbean dishes, they use uh, salted fish, you know, yeah, salt fish dried too. salted fish, and they soak it, and then they use it. I wonder, this recipe could probably do that also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you soak it. Yeah, I think it would be great. I mean, yeah. on an island, you don't tend to have tons of fresh things, but what you do have, you have pretty much all year. I mean, there are some seasons, right? But because yeah, you don't have winter. there's season for conch and there's season for lobster. And, but I think those seasons are kind of like when people are allowed to, to, to hunt them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're fishing for snapper every day. Uh, you can get, there's a local fish market just downtown where you can rock up and, and basically buy something filleted for you that was just brought up from the water. It's really, it's a, it's a sweet experience being able to do that. So we've got mahi here, which is caught locally. And, and as we were talking about okra, I have a, about, a half, I've got a, just about a pound of okra. The recipe calls for half a pound, but again, I love okra. So I'm gonna like douse it in okra. I'm gonna use coconut oil for a cooking oil. Uh, we've got a red pepper here. Mm. Oh, again, set design. Who's my set design? I didn't get, I didn't get the label well, off here. I, I forgot to put my coconut oil not on the floor. So it, <laughs> this right here is the oil I actually got last time I was in the Cayman Islands. This is an old rum bottle. Nope, that's that's great. An old wine bottle. That's great. But, um, the problem is, is if it's below 78 degrees, which apparently my floor is, it solidifies. So not using my well, coconut oil today. Yeah, here the coconut oil is nice and loose. <laughs> like, but okay, so I'm nice using oil. scallions <laughs> instead of onion because we're actually an onion-free, gluten-free household. Uh, my, my housemate doesn't, can't do onions and I can't do gluten, neither does she, so we do scallions. Um, got some limes, lots of lime in this dish to brighten the flavors. Uh, this is cassava or yuca. Cassava mm -hmm. and yuca are the same thing. Uh, sometimes I get this confused because I, I hear yucca. There's yucca plant <laughs> and there's yucca plant. And one for the longest good time for I thought this was your yucca. hair and one of them is good for eating, right? For what? <laughs> yucca is for making shampoo. Oh, is it? Yep. Hmm. I it's just knew it was an ornamental southwestern plant. But yeah, this is the cassava or yucca root. And then we have a sweet potato. I'm steaming up the butternut squash right now. Some cilantro. These are some local hot peppers. Thyme and garlic. I, I brought my favorite man into the show with us today, Ted Lasso. So we're gonna have uh, two cups of vegetable broth and two cans of coconut milk. So this is the entirety of what we're using today besides salt and pepper. So let's, uh, let's, Let's start with the fish. We're gonna finish up this butternut squash, but then just get the fish seasoned up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat is I'm gonna salt up the fish. Again, this is fresh mahi from my favorite farmer, Patrick, who brings me fresh fish and vegetables to my door twice a week if I want it that way. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, so basically, I mean, could, you could probably use pretty much any kind of starch. So sweet potato, regular potato, taro, yeah. breadfruit. Yeah, you could do breadfruit. You could do, uh, you, could do, you could like serve it over rice if you wanted to do that as well. And just put all vegetables in the rundown itself. Uh, most of the time when I make rundown, I don't really use any of the starchy vegetables. I'm just using tomato and okra and peppers. Um, lots there of lime. You ever put in there that is, you said I sh should never do that again? Nope, not yet. Can you serve it over cauliflower? Get your cruciferous in there. Well, if you have that coconutty, limey, cilantro-y, hot, spicy kind of goodness, you can, you can like, if you, you're going to have like leftover juice, right? You're going to have yeah. leftover um, goodness from the rundown. So if you do have leftovers, you can totally put it over pasta, put it over rice. So what I just did is I just put a lot of lime juice on the mahi and that's going to hang out for a little bit while we get the other stuff going. And I'm going to snag up the butternut squash. 
So we pull this out and then let this cool just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a fork. Let that guy hang out for a second. But I mean, shouldn't the skin pour. be a little bit? Yeah, I don't think my skin still needs to boil a little bit. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, it really only needs a couple minutes and you'd be good. The main part of this ingredient list for me today is chapstick. I burned the heck out of my lips this whole week, so <laughs> I'll be doing this a lot. Just like. Okay, so. Now, one thing I've, I've learned with butternut squash is if you have one of these um, scrapers that um, vegetable scraper that goes this direction and mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier. Let's see. I'm trying to see the other scraper. I don't see it. I always use this one. So this is my favorite bad boy right here. It's good and sharp. That one that you have, I, I, for me, it doesn't fit my hand. Like it's, okay. um, it's like too big for me to, to, to handle. So this one right here, works well for my hand size. And so right now I'm like, I'm doing the cassava because I'm letting the butternut squash. I'm letting it uh, cool down a little bit because it's so hot coming out the steam. With the cassava. So with, the, with the cassava, you just want to get a really good peel going. You want to take all of what I would call the bark off of the cassava. And so that- Doesn't the cassava that, have other names too? I'm trying to think. Yucca. There you go. Yeah, yucca and cassava are one in the same. So, all right, I think I need all to go the peel. a little bit more. It's still hard as a rock. Um, in Africa, they, in Africa, they use it um, uh, a lot as, as a kind of a grain. They've dried it, and you know, there's. You know, they use it as a grain. Yeah, the first time I, I actually used cassava flour, it's probably five or six years ago, back in Illinois, I found um, a cassava flour. And at that point, I was doing a lot of experimenting with being uh, gluten-free. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll give this cassava flour a try. So I found that it was, it was really pretty useful in doing um, a lot of recipes, um, like baking recipes. Here, it's a, a cassava cake is really, I was really popular. And it's, um, it's like a, a sheet pancake and they have a syrup that gets poured over the, uh, the cassava cake when it's done. Oh, man, so I miss, miss mango cassava cake. I used to buy uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good. yummy gooey stuff. That it's is. more like a pudding, really. Yeah, sometimes I've had it both ways. I've had it where it's, it's really kind of pudding like, and I've had it more where it's um, where it's more cake like. So I'm I'm cutting the cassava up in, in pretty good, you know, small bite sized pieces, and I'm just gonna throw the cassava right into the pot. So I just uh, scheduled us making pau de queso with a lady from Brazil, which is cassava flour. They're basically cheese balls. So it's cassava flour and cheese that you bake them. Oh, man. So that'll be in May, actually. Nice, nice. So now I'm getting into the sweet potato, just giving it a good chop. You know, just whatever bite-sized pieces work for you. And I'm doing them probably maybe a tad bit smaller than I usually would, because I just want to make sure it gets good, good cooked up today while we're doing this together. Well, I don't have cassava, so I'll just put sweet, chop up sweet potatoes. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got, uh, I did about a half a pound of cassava, a half a pound of sweet potato, and um, it'll be in just about a half a pound of the butternut squash. Okay, so, so my butternut squash is, it might be able to handle it, no problem now. It cooled down a good bit. And now when I peel it, boom, it just comes right off, no problem. There's no struggle whatsoever with getting the peeling off of it. Super easy. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a good lesson know how to do that because I, I never thought about that doing it that way yeah yeah it makes it really much easier to handle and 
when you steam it like that, it actually cooks pretty quickly. So you'll find that chopping up the, the uh, squash itself will be a little, little easier as well. So this is great today. I'm really glad to be with you guys today. This is a lot of fun because, uh, you know, Patty's here. She's from Southern Illinois. And uh, she hasn't been able to come, right, in like three years because of all the pandemic. We just, Cayman Islands just opened their border. Shelly, can uh, I tell everybody what today is? Yeah, yeah. I was going to, or. Okay, go for it. Oh, it's, it's Shelly's birthday today. So she is taking an hour out of her birthday to cook with us. Yep. So everybody, thank her for sharing her joy here and everybody who's a regular would be happy to see that i pulled out the big pot oh my goodness I'm not gonna mess people always tease me about my little pots ah so you big up the front up the big boy huh so are, I'm are you gonna doubling? Make some, i better not make a small batch uh, yeah are you doubling this or something me? Oh, I, I never do just double it. I always triple or quadruple. Oh, triple. Oh, my goodness. And, okay. Well, you cook for a family. You don't cook. Impressive. Don't cook you know. so. like, now, of course, I am cheating in that I got some frozen butternut squash. Too. A, I was afraid that I wouldn't. I am very bad about peeling butternut squashes, so I was afraid it would take too long. So then you gotta you gotta try this, or it'll it'll change things up for you. I never do this though. I always buy whole vegetables. Hey, or I think the trick is to steam, uh, get the water hot and boiling before you put your squash in. Well, that's a pretty common thing I do is I forget to get the water going before. Hey, my pot's getting full because I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the butternut squash at this, and uh, so what I'm gonna do now is so what have you cut up so far? So so far I've cut up the um, the cassava, the sweet potato, and the butternut squash, but I'm only using We're just half. We're it all squash. together in the pan. I mean, there's no special order, and then cook it down. Well, um, that's what we're getting to. So what I'm gonna do now with you guys is gonna, I'm gonna do. Two cloves of garlic in the pot. Wait a second, two cloves. Are we all allowed to only use two cloves in any recipe? You do you or you do you. I don't know, just, <laughs> that's a hard one. These are, these are, these are all Steve Smith's elephant garlic. Oh my gosh, that's, so, oh, that's nice. some garlic. Yeah, see, I get them. And I recently found out elephant garlic isn't actually a garlic. It's a wild onion. Mm. Tastes like garlic to me. I didn't know that either. So, um, now do we just, are, are you cutting up the garlic, mushing it? Yeah, I'm just giving the garlic a fine chop. And I've already done that, that's in the pot. And now I'm going to cut up my scallions, or if you got onion, you're going to do one medium-sized onion. I started becoming a, a, a sumo cook. I just get my hand and I just go with my heel and it just smushes. Look at that. Smush that garlic. That's good. Perfectly flat. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. And you can also do, if you got, a, if you got a, a wide knife like this, you just put the knife on the piece of garlic, give that a chop, and then it'll just, all that, that peeling will just fall right off, no problem. All right, so with your onion, throw your onion or your scallions in the pot. I forget which recipe we did. I think it was a Chinese recipe where you didn't even peel the garlic. You just toss the whole garlic in there and the skin pretty much cooks down if you're cooking something a long time. Huh. Okay. Or, you know, some, a lot of Asian recipes, they're used to like, especially if you have fish with bones in it or chicken with bones in it, you're used to like being careful and spitting stuff out. So you can do that with 
the garlic skin too if some of it didn't cook if you didn't cook it long enough that's where i've heard that most of the vitamin c lives in the garlic and the onion is in the skin oh. huh. yeah, or a lot sense. of it a lot of Western recipes really do a good job of taking all the nutrition off, like peeling the potato. Apparently. True. Yeah, and if you use the whole cloves of garlic with the skin on, they're they're easy to take the skin off when you the dish has been prepared. All right, let me. I've been trying to practice. That. <laughs> you know, yeah, but some of the skin will come off into the. Um, to what you're cooking and then that yeah you have to be careful yeah you have to be aware of that right but that's the thing is a, a lot of garlic the skin is so skin thin it'll actually dissolve right. yeah i've heard a lot of sometimes the italians put all the garlic in there and then they just take it out of the dish before it's served i like doing that i like putting in things the garlic hole like that i i i that that um to me imparts the flavor because I, I have to be honest with you. I'm not a huge garlic fan. I know, I, I know that's almost like say for that. flavor or nutrition because some people for flavor makes their constitution too hot. You know, some people it's, it's not good. Yeah. And that's the thing for me too. It's too hot for me. So I, I don't really feel great when I eat it, but I do like when it imparts a little bit of flavor. So if I can have that, that essence of it without the bites of it, that's what my preference is. So I have, I've, I've sliced up a red bell pepper here and I'm just, I'm putting that in on top of the scallions and on top of the garlic. So you have it sort of like in the, I see that you have it in, in like slices. Yeah, I made like thin slices mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And then it's really pretty. And you know, when, the, when you have the coconut milk in there and everything, the color comes through and it's to have the slices in the dish. It just, it's very, you know, aesthetically pleasing when you, when you, when you serve the dish. So now I'm going to put in uh, some fresh thyme. So when you buy fresh thyme, it's super easy to use. You have your thyme stem and you run your finger down and you sprinkle it in. That's, that's how you prepare thyme. Super easy. And I'm just gonna do a couple of stems of thyme right into the pot. I, I suppose if you did a really big pot of this, that's where you can put, instead of stripping that out, you could put an herb bag. Exactly, you could do, or you could just put the whole, the whole stems in there and fish them out later, absolutely. Called the bouquet garni. A bouquet garni, exactly. You could do the garlic, the whole garlic in there. You could do the thyme stem in there. You could even put some other herbs in there that you like. You could do uh, some cilantro in there and then top it later with more cilantro. So, so is everybody gonna... seeing me struggle with this butternut squash? I don't know what it is with me and butternut squash, but I'm just like... So was it, did, did it boil? Did the water boil and you steamed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's coming... The one that is coming off, it's it's okay, but I don't know. Is anybody else trying that? Is anybody did anybody else steam theirs? I probably should just leave it. So I'm pouring some coconut oil in over this. And I'm oh, have a look at the comment that I put in the chat about butternut squash. It might help you in the future. Okay. Yeah, I think someone put in the chat if you cut the tip off before you steam it. Now do you, were you talking about both ends before you started? No, 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 no. Cut the, the tip off if you can. If not, just prick it, but cook it. The, cook the whole thing in the microwave and then just cut it in half afterwards. Scoop the seeds out afterwards. It's as soft as butter and you can even eat the skin. It's as soft as anything. That's a good, right. good tip. Yeah, Thanks. I've done that before in the... Uh, that's the only thing I've ever done is... Yeah, because it's going to cook way. down anyway. So, okay, so we got peppers, we've got thyme, scallions, garlic, coconut oil. Oh, there we go. So we'll get that going and we'll saute this for five minutes. Okay, I need to start sauteing. So otherwise the fish is over here turning white in the lime juice. Ah, nice. 
So while this is getting going, I know that a lot of you, you know, we're talking from around the world right now. So some of you might be in some cold climates right now. Would anyone like to have a peek at um, some Cayman tropical lush weather? Um, yes, we want you to tease us. Come on, let's go. Fred, Fred does that every week. He's like, it's like this in California. So exactly. we're gonna, we'll get as far Wait, as- First of all, this is Shelly's birthday cake. Wow. Ooh, that is fancy. Oh, it's so wow, pretty. Yeah. So we'll take you as far as the Wi-Fi will allow us. Come yeah, on. the Wi-Fi will bug out soon. Boy, oh boy. I just had the wrong veggie. I have two of these and one of them, this one, look, it just peels it right off. The other one was not. Every once in a while, you need to sharpen the blade on Wow, those. that looks amazing. Wow. Where is this in Jamaica? Uh, Are you in Jamaica? No, Cayman, I think it's Cayman. 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 So Cayman's, oh, okay. Here's wow. a hibiscus flower for you. Ooh, wow. Got hibiscus. Got palm trees. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful lush court, courtyard here at the complex that we live. And about 30 steps that way is, is the beautiful Caribbean Ocean. Wow, wow. I wish Wi Fi could get us there. We would lose yeah, you. Yeah, we're so. losing you. Okay, we'll come back. Oh, yeah, I need to put that time in there too. Nice place. Yeah. Really big. I was using I I was using the one that Julian vegetables, not peel them. So that's why I was having a hard time. It's already smelling really good with the coconut oil and the veggies. So we're getting a saute on this. We're just starting to meld the flavors together. Well, you can all, uh, you, you can't even tell there's coconut in there. I mean, you know, to look at it. There's coconut oil. Your yeah, coconut oil, yeah. Oh, it's oil. Yeah, okay. coconut oil for the oil to fry it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and my coconut oil, I don't know if you caught that, Barbara, it's still solid. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and add kind of the bread kind, the bread, the bread kind of vegetables. You can make a lot of a lot of this really cheaply. Yes, and you know that traditional Jamaican Caribbean cooking. Okay, we're having audio <laughs> issues. Other people having audio problems? No. Nope, I can hear everything. We all good. All right. So yeah, traditional Caribbean cooking doesn't have a lot of fancy ingredients. You're talking fish, you're talking peppers, local vegetables like okra and and pumpkins. Um, there are also, you know, the people, the growers here grow tomatoes. So there's a lot of good vegetables available, and and so it's not uh, it's not expensive. It's not fancy. It's just they really know how to put flavors together, so it's so delicious. I'm going to go ahead and add all of this the squash and the potato and the cassava. Are you just trying to give it a quick fry, not really to cook it, but to like give it like a, like a little bit of a flavor by grilling it a little bit? Yeah, you're just starting to, to melt the flavors together by doing that initial saute. Adding in all of the sweet potato, the cassava, the squash. Mm -hmm. And then once you add that in, go ahead and add in your vegetable stock. So we got vegetable stock going in here. We 
Sorry. And Ted Lasso, we're going to add in a, two cans of coconut milk. Hmm. One thing I was surprised with is because it's so sunny, not more people didn't cook using solar cookers. This would be something that would be perfect in a solar cooker. You just put it in there and let it slow cook. For let it, hours. yeah, because there's no really hands on after it all goes in the pot, it does its thing. So there's really nothing to be done. And yeah, you're right. Solar cooking would be really perfect for this. So I'm going to go ahead and season this up with a little more salt and pepper. Yeah, my mom, she, I don't know, probably nine months of the year, she, she's like, why would I heat my house? And then have to cool it, I'll just cook outside. So she's got two solar ovens. Well, you may have, been, you may have seen, or um, if you went to the botanical gardens here, they have a home set up, like a traditional Comanian home. And in the traditional Comanian home, you're going to have a small living space in the center and perhaps two bedrooms flanked on the side of the house. Now, if you, uh, from there, that's the entirety of the house itself. But aside from that, they have a, like a cooking shed. So all the cooking is done outside of the house in a different area. And that makes good sense, right? Why would you, if you, if you don't have the luxuries of air conditioning and things like that, why would you get a hot pot going inside of your house when it's, you know, 100 degrees outside and 80 degrees at night? I don't now think it's the me. temperature, it's the humidity. Oh, you already got your coconut milk in there. I'm yeah, I got the coconut milk and the vegetable broth in. Now I'm going to add in two local hot peppers whole. Bonk, just goes right in. She's made a face. Yeah, nice color and a face. <laughs> now, because I'm making so much, I don't think I want to use my veggie broth. I can my own veggie broth. I just save all the bits. Like, I'll save all these sticks from this time for later to make veggie broth. But I save them for my bone broth. Yep, the same thing. I, I actually have three bags in my freezer. I have one that's chicken, one that's uh, red meat, and one that's veggies. Do you really? Awesome. And then I just, when I want broth, I just cook it up. But yep. Um, because I'm making, I'm probably making, I'll make like two gallons of this probably. I think I'll just put water in it. It won't be as phenomenal, but I've got, I've got some veggie soup powder where I dry veggies. Maybe do that if it doesn't come out perfect. Oh, so you dry your own, veg own veggies and then powder them up? Pulse yeah. them up? Oh, that's cool. That's great. In this, I, the key well, to I mean, anything I, is yeah. the sauce or the broth for sure. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit more lime juice because I love lime juice. You know, you put the lime in the coconut, right? And you drink it all up. And I just added a little bit more time because why not? And it's looking pretty happy because he's smiling. So I think we're doing good so far. Now, you always use fresh fish. Have you ever done this with canned fish? No, I haven't. But I have, I made a run down the other night, or actually Patty did it, with uh, tomatoes and coconut milk and, and chili and um, sliced yeah. peppers, onions. And we have some of the, of the good yumminess left over. And so, so yeah, we actually were thinking about mixing it up with some salmon or some canned salmon that I had just to, uh, to use it up because it's so good, it's such good stuff. So once all this stuff comes to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to medium low and you lit it and this cooks for 20 minutes. Oh, only 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. it was more like one of those recipes where you had to cook it, you know, for a couple hours. To like well remember like for for caribbean cooking things are 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 traditionally eaten more fresh 
And if you're talking about more Northern hemispheres, yeah, we would cook things down and cook it down and cook it down and cook it down for hours, right? But here, a, a cook down is gonna be much shorter time. Like, like a, a cook down here is gonna be, you know, maybe 40 minutes, maybe an hour for something. Where in more Northern climates, you're gonna cook something for a long time. You just don't want to use that kind of heat and fire here that you would in more northern climates. Well, I think, I guess, northern climates were also beating up the house with the, while we're cooking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So don't mind if you cook it slow and low for many hours, but yeah, that just helps keep everybody warm, right? If you slow, if you do slow and low, and that's more when you the the longer that you cook something like that, do the slow and low, the more warming it is for the body. So when we take in food that is cooked like that, we're warming the body more. So when in Caribbean climates, when you cook things faster, when you have more fresh food, that's more cleansing for the body. It's it's it it's constitutionally different. So it's it's a it's a way of um, paying attention to how the body responds to different climates and different needs. Well, so see, this I goes, still haven't put tomatoes or fish in there. Yeah, no fish yet. Go ahead and throw in your tomatoes. Yeah, go ahead and do your tomatoes right now. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my okra too. Let's see. Um, since I don't have okra, I think I'll add some just regular. I put sweet potatoes, but I can add some regular white, white potatoes because they'll break down and thicken. I think too, what I like to do in, in these kind of recipes is I just, I like to see the color. I love to see the red of the peppers, the orange of the sweet potato, the green of the vegetables that I throw in. You know that um, nutrition starts in the eyes. So when we make things that are uh, appealing to us through our, through our eyes, that's, that's, the first, that's the first bite that we take is through our eyes. So I just, to me, this is, this is gorgeous and, and it, it builds the appetite and it, and it gets you going. So I love seeing all the colors run through here. So we're going to let this cook down a little bit more. So, or how much time do we have? Cause we are at what? I don't know what time it is. Anyway, it didn't matter. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions so far? Ryan, what do they call it? Came in time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like the party here starts at two but it'll probably get going around six. <laughs> <laughs> Just so like. uh, do you, you have somebody holding a camera or a laptop or, or, or what? Yeah, I've got a laptop here that we've got set up. And then my, my, my nearest and dearest friend, Patty from the Southern part of Illinois is, um, is here with me and she's doing uh, the camera work for me. So I'm, I'm really happy that she's here because this is the first birthday that she's been able to spend with me in the last three years. And she's meeting all my friends here and she's helping my housemate get the party going. And then she's exploring, exploring what this is to be here with me in the Cayman Islands and exploring what the Cayman Islands has to offer. So Patty, what's your, what's, what are the things that you've done here that you love so much and have really, really enjoyed doing? Besides the humidity. <laughs> Oh, you know what, or this is the best time to visit because the humidity is low. The ocean is warm enough to get in to every single morning. So after our walk, we go and we swim in the ocean. Um, and uh, the second day I was here, we went to the Elizabeth uh, Botanical Gardens. Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth Botanical Gardens and saw the endangered blue iguana. I saw three huge? of them. That was awesome. Yeah, we saw a couple of big boys. Yeah, really big. And then we saw a mating pair of Caymanian parrots, which was really beautiful because they were bobbing their heads and pecking, you know, at each other, just touching their uh, beaks to each other. And it was just so beautiful. But I, you know, and we saw an agouti. And a goody. Oh. Goody is yeah. the it's it's a it's a an um it kind looks of a like a giant gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> is what it looks it's like. Good. I mean, like, but yeah, it's got a cute little round bum and it's got really skinny stick legs and the legs look too little for its little bum body and 
<laughs> and they're so cute and they they're elusive they they're very they shy hide. yeah they're very they're very hard to see you rarely see an agouti but we actually got to see it that day which is really special that was very special but you know being with Shelly on her birthday oh my gosh it just made me cry to see that beautiful cake last year and I couldn't I couldn't share that birthday celebration with her so being here this year means so much but March is a beautiful time to visit the Cayman Islands mm -hmm. um the humidity is not very intense at all. I'm extremely comfortable just sitting out there. My first day here, all I did was sit Let's and see, stare at the water. From what temperature to what temperature? 70s to 80s, Whoa, but there's geez. always a breeze. No, but you, were, you came from what you temperature in, in the States? When I was in uh, St. Louis getting ready to fly out, it was in the 30s, and then I'd heard that it was going to be yeah, 12 degrees the last couple nights and it snowed in Carbondale, Illinois. So yeah, so here I am and I am, I just can't, you can't beat it. <laughs> yep. All right. Look how I, I'm, you know, I'm making a big pot of it. So. So um, Patty mentioned the Queen Elizabeth Botanical Park, and, and just to give a little bit more information about the Cayman Islands, we are a, a territory of the UK. Um, British Virgin and, Islands, right? Pardon? The British Virgin Islands? Is that what they're called? Mm, you know, uh, or my, I think that... They are a territory. They're the only Caribbean island that's not independent. Yeah, we are. We are a territory of the UK. We have our own money. We have our own Cayman dollar. Uh, we have a governor that's appointed by the Queen. Uh, we have. Uh, we make our own laws, and we can be influenced by the Queen at times for the laws that are being established here on the island. But we do have our own, uh, our own government, our own parliament, and uh, and so, yep. Everybody will be proud of me whipping out the big pot. Yeah. Because I mean, part of it is most of this stuff is really cheap. I mean, I bought. Uh, butternut squash, I think it was like two dollars, and a bag this of is that was in a bag of potatoes. It's a, an island where I am I back? Yeah, okay. So, so what I was so what I was saying is that um, there's a hundred and I think 23 or 25 countries represented here on the Cayman Islands, and so it's it's a it's a nexus of the world. That's it's a, that's like actually a phrase that Patty used, and I thought it was a really good phrase. Um, and I'm a I'm by profession a psychotherapist, and I and I came here uh, to work for the government as a psychotherapist. And it's been a, a fun, fantastic um, education in getting to know all these different cultures and understanding how they see the world and how what I am to do or what is what how I can best serve them to achieve the things that they want to achieve and coming into to counseling so I feel like I got this really awesome perspective in in coming here and taking the, a position right away that I took well I'm gonna um, ask you something you don't have to answer but what is some preconceived bias you might have had about another culture or something that by being exposed to so many cultures Kind of get blown away. I mean, it's a spur of the moment question, and if it's too hard to answer, one thing I will say is that you know there there are so many different accents and dialects. The the, the language on the island is English, uh, but but people come with their their own accents and, and dialects in, in the language. And and over the last three years, I've gotten pretty good at understanding the deep Scottish accents that can be really hard to, to understand sometimes. Oh. I, I remember when I was in Amsterdam and there was three young lads from Ireland. One guy was from the country. One guy was from a small city. One guy was from the big city, all speaking English. And quite literally, if the guy from the country spoke, the guy from the small city had to 
translate to the guy from the big city and to me. And we were all speaking English. Yeah. But yeah, just accents. Yeah. So that's been really fun. You know, that's been really fun to, to obtain the ear, to understand all, all of the different accents that, you know, a lot of uh, people from Ireland are here. A lot of Australians are here. Um, Scottish people, uh, wonderful, all wonderful, wonderful people. Um, a lot of people from the Philippines and other Asian countries, uh, just lovely people. It's, there's a saying here on the island, came in kind. And, and that it really is true. There is a, a kindness on the island because, you know, this is a very small place. And, and so we really don't small, have room small for is anything it? else. Say I mean, what? Especially, in, it was small before, but then you had like a lockdown for a long time. So it became even smaller. Oh, there's a different. lot of people who just leave for the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this is this island is 22 miles long. And I think the widest that's the, part. That's Grand Cayman. That's Grand Cayman. <laughs> yes. And the, the widest part, I think, is maybe four miles. So we're, there were 65,000 people on an island that is 22 miles by four miles. That's not a lot of space. Very small, so, very small town caring though, because yes, everybody knows everybody because, well, it's a small town. Well, well, what about the people indigenous people? Lives. What's the percentage of indigenous people that actually live there? You know, that's a really good question. And, I, and I'm gonna give you an educated guess because so much of this population is inhabited by expats at this point that I, I actually think it's about a third of the population that's that's Kamanian. Yeah, so. Would you would you agree, or do you have a, a, a beat on that? Seems about right. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I lived there, well, almost 10 years ago now. <laughs> Just, oh God, has it been that long? Oh, wow. <laughs> I was there 2014. Oh, okay, <laughs> um, yeah. So any questions about this, Stu? Um, you, so the only thing I haven't put in it is the fish. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, I do have this um, scotch bonnet hot sauce. And, nice. Um, did, you, did you put in your coconut uh, milk? Uh, yep. Yes. I put coconut milk. And in my case, I put two cans of coconut milk and then I put two cans of water. And that's it for this big pot um, so far. I might add more liquid to it, but so like it's almost covered with liquid, even with the four cans. Yeah, this one is definitely so, covered in liquid. So what we've I'll got in here is we've got water. two cups of vegetable stock. We've got about a about a pound of sweet potato, cassava, and butternut together. Uh, one whole sliced red pepper, uh, one medium onion, or a bunch of scallions garlic, thyme, salt, pepper, about a pound of okra is in here. And then two of the local hot peppers that are that are kind of bouncing around on top of the stew. But I noticed you didn't cut them up. You just put the whole thing because- Yeah, put them in you whole. You probably kill someone if you cut them up. Yeah, yeah, definitely putting them in whole is the key. And it smells so good. Like so I think this is a good time because I, I we're getting close to two o'clock, right? like so the only thing i haven't put in is the fish when do you put that in yeah so this is a good time to go ahead and put in the fish so so we we want to so what we're doing here is we want this to to, to bubble and brew for 20 minutes now and mine are big chunks that. should i chop them into bite size or? no you can do whatever you want to do so i'm actually going to put mine R, in no no well. R, i don't think you should put yours in yet because your vegetables haven't cooked that much okay yeah. So yeah, you want to get it. You want to get it in there for a good twenty minutes. You want your butternut and your cassava and your sweet potato to be tender before you put before you put the fish in. This is good and tender. The sweet potato is the cassava good and tender. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my fish. See, in. I'm stretching mine out. I actually put a whole bag of regular potatoes, which is like what three pounds. So yeah, it can be. So this is the mahi, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like layer it on. Oh my goodness. And just kind of nestle it in. Is your mouth watering yet? 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to I want to eat some of that. <laughs> do you eat it just like plain or do you serve it over rice or pasta or like what is common or you said with breadfruit? Wait, the way that I would love to eat it is I would love to have some breadfruit fries cuz I love me some breadfruit fries. So that's what I would like to, to I would eat. love cauliflower. Um, yeah, Patty would do cauliflower rice, perhaps. Um, I think pasta would be really good. I think that um, rice, regular rice, would be great. I, well, think I, I would. I uh, I like it just as a soup myself. Yeah, that's nice. Absolutely, that's nice. Absolutely. So while we're talking and wrapping things up, I want to make sure that you all get the cilantro piece of this because cilantro and if you <laughs> don't like the taste of cilantro like me italian parsley oh italian parsley <laughs> i'm not good. allergic people there are people who are allergic who think cilantro not think but their taste buds say cilantro tastes like soap so yeah right but i don't know and i just soap. i feel like i pay twice as much for a thing of cilantro as I do for a, like I get twice as much parsley for the same flavor. That's my bias. Yeah, I am. A, I'm a cilantro gal. I could, I could just pick up this bunch of cilantro and just start notion on it and be happy. So I'm going to do a really healthy, a really healthy chop of cilantro for this. So you just, do you put it in the soup or you just serve, put it over when you serve it? Well, what I'm going to do right now, and really this is just coming to me in the moment, is I'm going to chop up pretty much all of this bunch that I have. And for right now, I'm just going to put the stems in. Yeah, that's what I usually do is I put the stems in and then save the, the herb part because it's yeah, well, it's not that cheap. You don't want to throw away all that good flavor. No, the flavor runs all the way down. Yeah, use it all for sure. So we're going to stir in the cilantro and just tuck it in around the fish while the fish cooks. Mm, looking really you just, good. You just have it on a very low heat. Yeah, I just now, this, this second, as you said, that turned it up to medium because I put the fish in and the fish cooled it down a little bit because it was still chill. So I just turned the heat up to get it bubbling again. And then I'm going to chop up the rest of the cilantro. So you didn't, you did, you said there wasn't really anything that you couldn't put in there. What is something that you have put in there that you didn't have today? I put tomato in quite a bit. I like tomato in it. Yeah, I noticed that you didn't put tomato in. Right, yeah, just this, this, is, this is one that I just chose not to put tomato in. I, um, when I put tomato in, I typically focus on the tomato, the, the sliced peppers, and some zucchini. So sometimes I've, I'll put zucchini in it as well. That's really good. Really, any vegetable that you like is gonna be delicious in it. You can't go wrong, uh, just as long as you like the vegetable. That's the only requirement. <laughs> Make sure you like the vegetable, yeah. All right, so I mean, really the, the flavor is, it's what, I guess you, the fish itself isn't really imparting flavor into it because it's just a chunk. It's not really much fish flavor to it. I think that you'll get a little bit of essence through it, but it's not gonna be fishy by any means because the coconut milk and the peppers, those elements are going to flavor the fish more than the fish flavors the, the soup. And then also so, you put a lot of lime to it, yeah. Yes, a lot of lime, yeah. You lime the fish like we did in the beginning, you lime the fish so you got that marinade going while you're preparing other things. And then I put lime in the stew itself and I'll finish it with more cilantro and lime too because I just like the, the brightness of flavor of that, especially to balance the garlic for me. I like, I like more of the brightness of favorite to balance the garlic that's a, that's a heavier flavor. So, I mean, this is actually not, in the beginning I said, I thought fish and you know pumpkin would be horrible, but this right here is like 
a light summer soup. Really, it yeah. comes out like with mm -hmm. chunks of fish in it. With chunks of fish in it. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, you know, you, you have a light coconut soup with this, the, the thyme and some lime and your sweet, sweet potato, sweet pumpkin, sweet summer mm -hmm. squash and tomatoes. So it's got a lot of sweetness to it with a little bit of the, the savoriness of the thyme. Mm -hmm. All right. You've got spicy, you've got sweet, you've got uh, the savory from the thyme, you've you've got all these elements of flavors coming together, and 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 it still is quite light and, and bright with the citrus. So it's it's a perfect thing to have over rice or pasta or breadfruit with it. Yeah. So let's just take a look, see what's going on here. So I would say that with everything that I bought. Um, the mahi here is like $15 a pound. Uh, the vegetables, I think, were probably about uh, all together here, paying here on the island, I would say probably about $15, $20. So, and this is gonna, this is gonna serve a lot of people, probably twice. So it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, economical way to cook. It's easy because we had one pot a chopping block and a pot. You're doing pretty good. So there's no extra prep. There's no frying things on the side. There's there's no extra preparation you have to do. It just all goes in and it's super simple. And what can be better in the summertime than just like a one pot dish you cook quick, quickly, but it's super nourishing, it's healthy, it's, it's good leftovers. Yeah. So let's just see how the fish is doing here. So the fish cooks, once you put the fish in, the whole thing cooks all together for another 20 minutes. So the, you see the fish is getting getting cooked here, looking pretty good. I wonder, yeah, I guess I was trying to think, I always try to think of variants, like frying the fish separately, that really wouldn't make a difference. Um, frying the fish separately would be amazing. You think? Absolutely, just so if you wanted to. Because so, I think Indeed. like, you know, um, Americans tend to not like their flavors mixed. And so like if you fried the fish and then just basically serve this with a piece of fish on top, you'd have separate flavors. But I think that would ruin this dish. Well, you know, think of it this way. You know, you could do, you could do a little bit of fish sauce in this because fish sauce and coconut and lime are really good together. Now you're going to take it a little bit Asian with that, but just putting a little bit of fish sauce in there and doing it with more of a, of a hearty stock, do a chicken stock, uh, do a, a really hearty vegetable stock. So, and add just a little bit of fish broth or fish sauce because fish sauce is a flavor conduit. And then bread the fish any way you like, fry that up, get some, some maybe beans and rice, pour the sauce over the beans and rice and then layer your fried fish on top of that. Yeah. Now you the fish sauce gives you your umami. Yeah, I mean, think yes, about it. This, funny. Exactly. This, this has That's all better. the flavors. It's got it's got sweet, salty, umami. I mean, it's literally got all the flavors in one dish. Yeah. I was thinking it doesn't have umami, but then got the fish. Got the fish. Yeah. So, all right. Anybody has any questions? And let Shelly get to her birthday party. Although, after we do the cooking show, we hang out and eat and talk. So. Maybe oh, you'll no. allow us to join your birthday party a little bit. <laughs> well, again, I, like I said, you know, the party starts, that's in quotes, at 2. But it, but we'll p probably see people coming in around 3.30 or 4. <laughs> well, we, can't, we can't say times because it's like 9 p.m. in Germany and London I mean, right now. Ah, I got it. Well, okay, then I'll say it this way. People are really starting up in like two hours from now, <laughs> even though the party starts now. Right, island time. It's island time. You got it. You got it. So did I miss any questions in the chat? Thank you very much, Shelly, for sharing your culture and, and a little bit of island warmth. And mine's been boiling. I'm, I'm going to put a bunch of this in containers and I have a giveaway fridge in my front yard. So it's going to be spread out around town. A nice. little bit of your island love. So.
Uh, you're you're such a gracious man, Or, and and you do a lot of good in the world. So I was more than happy to to do this with you. And uh, and you know uh, another one more story about Or. So yes, what about me? This is about you. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. This is about me too. So so you know, Or was saying about ten years ago he lived here, right? So somehow I found out when I got an opportunity to come here to the island that that Or had lived here, and Or was so instrumental in in helping me to get prepared oh, i thought you had to drive on the wrong side of the road we that's right so, so actually patty the one that's got the camera right now patty and or and i went out in in um around like a like a really quiet neighborhood at night drove on the wrong side we're waiting for the cops to come get you yeah yeah and we we drove around on the wrong side of the road so i could feel what it felt like to drive on the wrong side of the road and we had a ball we just had a ball doing that so it was it was so or was really good to me when i was I, making the preparations how long stuff. have you lived in the cayman islands now it's like i just years? crossed over three years oh just like oh so you went over the three-year threshold because that's like the, the the what do you call it that's the hard one yeah just crossed over three years and as a matter of fact uh, I'm no longer working for the government. My my housemate and friend and business partner and sailing buddy, uh, we started a new organization here on Islander. We're trying to really get it started. It's called the Cayman Islands Treatment and Training Institute. And we are both psychotherapists. And we're going to be focusing, specializing in two forms of psychotherapy on island. And uh, so our, in, our mission is to to bring really high quality, progressive, high technology forms of psychotherapy to people in the Cayman Islands. There's a lot of people on the island who just cannot afford it and don't have insurance or are underinsured. So we wanna make sure that we tap into that population and help everybody here. Well, you can also set up, what do they call it? Um, medical tourism, because they've already got some of that. You could do- That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna <laughs> And that's going to be kind of our the medical tourism to pay for the low income stuff. That's kind of our Robin Hood project. Yes. So, so we're doing the medical tourism and it's going to be kind of like a pay it forward thing where people who can afford that, the, this kind of treatment can then pay it forward to someone who is unable to afford it. So you hit it, you nailed it. We're going right into that market. All right. Anybody have any final questions about the cooking and then stick around and we can chat afterwards. Thank you very much. It's like thanks, Patty. What, what do you say? Work. What do you, what do you say? Thank what you. you say Bye. You say good, what do you say when you say goodbye on the island? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what is it? Be came and kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I I forgot. I don't know. 